The reflected selfie has become a bit of a classic in modern mobile portrait photography, but there's no need to wait until you're at a bathroom mirror to do it. If you pass a nice looking reflection when you're out and about, why not give it a go? And the thing that really drew me to this particular reflection was the expanse of sea behind me. Now in terms of framing, there's a few things that I've uh, chosen to make this work for the composition that I'm after. The first is to zoom in a little bit. I've chosen a two time zoom on the camera so that I don't see the actual frame of the window itself. Sometimes you want it. In this case, I just want to concentrate on the reflection. So I've zoomed in a little bit. The next thing you have to be careful of is the actual height of the camera itself. When you're doing a selfie using the front camera, it's very easy to have the phone in front of your face. We don't want that in this case because it will be literally in front of your face in the picture. So you want to position it lower in your body. And then you'll need to recompose quite carefully to make sure that you are in the shot. Now I'm not putting myself in the middle here. I'm putting myself towards one side, leaving the other side open for someone interesting to walk or run past. Maybe they're riding a bike or walking a dog, but it's going to make that picture look a lot more dynamic and interesting. Then once you're lined up, just rest your finger over the uh, shutter release button on the screen and start tapping away to take the picture. Now you will have to glance down from time to time to make sure that you haven't accidentally moved your finger away from it. It's quite easy to do that when you're not looking. And the only other thing to watch out for is that when you are looking at the reflection, you want to look at the reflection of your camera's lens so that when you play that picture back, you are actually looking directly into the camera. So let's give that a go. Okay, so in this first picture, you can see one of the perils of the reflected selfie. I'm actually looking at the screen to make sure that I'm framed correctly. So I'm not looking at the camera, I'm, I'm looking down and also there was nothing to fill this space in the side. So this is a picture that has not worked for me. For me, this one works much better. I'm not looking at the camera, I'm looking to one side deliberately, hoping that somebody is gonna walk towards me in the other direction. They didn't on the day, but I still quite like this very purposeful stride. It looks a lot more dynamic. This person is definitely not standing still. They're moving across the frame. And that is a lot more of an interesting picture to me. In this shot, I'm looking at the camera successfully and I've got somebody to fill this portion of the frame. But the position of their legs to me doesn't look that exciting. It's almost like they're stood still. I prefer them to look as if they were striding across the frame. And this is why you have to take so many pictures when you're doing reflected selfies, because in this particular instance, I want to make sure that this space is filled with something that looks more interesting and more dynamic. This one's much better. I'm looking at the camera and remember, I'm looking at the reflection of the camera's lens in the window. The phone is discreet enough that you don't notice it at first, but then later on you do notice that it's a reflected selfie. But I love the shape of the bike here, the way it moves across the frame, and again, the way that the shadow is contained within that frame. Nothing is cut off here. And to me, it's a very nice balance of elements. So that's my favorite.